a huge night in terms of sweeping uh, various parts of the country. We spent a couple of hours looking at Atlantic Canada and uh, knowing very well that the Liberals were doing extremely well there, wondering would that signal what might happen in the rest of the country? Well, it clearly seems to have done exactly that. Let's go down here from the insiders, Jamie, Kathleen and David. Uh, David uh, gave us a sense earlier what we should expect as a result of those Atlantic Canada numbers and it seems that they've been borne out already and we still have uh, quite a few seats to hear from, yet still 50 to hear from. So let's hear from uh, Jamie, Kathleen and uh, David in terms of what you've witnessed tonight. Tough night for two of them. Not a tough night for the man in the middle. David, uh, do you want to start us? Well, Peter, I think it's very clearly going to be a majority uh, Liberal government. Um, <clears throat> all the ridings that the Liberals would have needed to win, all the stretch ridings uh, that would have been required to win uh, if we were going to pull, uh, uh, pull more than 170 seats are coming uh, along. We're doing very well in Francophone, uh, Quebec. Uh, people like Julian Fantino are losing in Vaughan. We're winning in the Oakvilles and the Burlingtons. On the outskirts of the city of Toronto, we're winning the NDP ridings in downtown Toronto. Uh, <clears throat> so I think uh, we have very, very high hopes for British Columbia, um, for a really a historic Liberal result in British Columbia. So I think uh, I'm pretty confident right now that we are over the majority number, and uh, it's an unbelievably historic night for the Liberal Party, written off uh, four dead uh, four years ago. And not just by uh, their critics, by some Liberals as well. Uh, I wrote uh, I wrote articles that posited it was more likely that the Liberal Party would uh, never seriously contest another election than that it would win this one. But that was before the uh, Deus Ex Machina, Justin Trudeau, arrived on the scene and really changed everything. Yeah. Well, he certainly seems to have changed things uh, tonight. There's a, and this is not your father's Trudeau. So he's a very different guy, a very different campaigner. And in some ways, you know, if this holds up and he moves, continues to rack up these numbers, he's going to redefine what Trudeau mania means, given what we saw in 1968. These are staggering numbers and right across the country uh, that he is delivering. We'll see, although he still hasn't delivered in Alberta, at least the last time I looked. I'm, I'm sorry, but coming where he came from, there yep. is no question that this is a more impressive result than 1968. All right. That'll give us something for the uh, at issue panel to talk about as the evening <laughs> goes on. Thank you, David. Kathleen, you're up next. I mean, I'm sure this is a tough night for you. So give me a give me a sense of, uh, of not only what you're feeling, but what this means for the NDP. For sure, it's a tough night for me, for my friends, for people like Megan Leslie. In fact, Megan Leslie, I believe, is trending across Canada on Twitter right now. She was such a popular MP, so to lose someone like her of her caliber is is certainly disappointing. Um, but looking ahead uh, to the results the rest of the night, still looking for hopefully some good news out of places like Essex and Ontario in the southwest, or in possibly in Oshawa and some of our 2011 caucus in Quebec, uh, places like Berche Masquenonge, where uh, Ruth Ellen Brasseau holds a seat, uh, or places like uh, Rosemont, La Petite Patrie, where uh, Alexander Bullerys is. But there is some good news in all of this. Out of the Atlantic results that we've seen so far tonight, Peter, um, we left the last parliament with only five women uh, in the Atlantic region as MPs, and, and now there's seven. And so that's good news, and I hope that trend continues as we move across Canada. Uh. Well, uh, I mean, you, you point to some of the positives, but look, look at that number. I know there's BC still to come. You guys were around 100. There are 24 leading and elected right now. This has got to be a crushing blow for your party's hopes. It, it, it is, you know, we have to wait to see what happens in BC. As you just said, the, the polls are just closing there. Um, but obviously this is, you know, disappointing for New Democrats across the country and disappointing for people who, for some of our really strong incumbent MPs, people like Jack Harris, uh, people like Megan Leslie, Peter Stauffer, incredibly popular, principled, ethical MPs who have done such great work in our parliament um, and really were an example of uh, how we could get things done. All right, uh, Jamie, um, the Conservatives uh, are going to lose. They're out of power after 10 years. Are they going to come in or somewhere around 100 seats, probably uh, a bit more than that, uh, after we hear from B.C.? But uh, your thoughts on the night? 
Well, I think David is exactly right, uh, Peter. Uh, the Liberals are winning where the New Democrats needed to win. The Liberals are winning where the Conservatives needed to win. And so I think we can be cautious and we can say we're waiting for British Columbia. But, you know, when I look at that number at the bottom of the screen and where we're sitting, I, mean, I think we know how the night is going to end. It's a very tough night for uh, the government, who's governed for a long time. It's a tough night for the Democrats. And it's a wonderful night for, uh, for the Liberals. And for them, it never gets better than tonight. This is the apex of it all. Is this a night where we, we're used to watching leaders resign on nights like this, uh, given the most recent provincial elections, Paul Martin back in 2006? Is that the decision that is being weighed right now, one assumes, by Stephen Harper? I'm sure it's being talked about. I have no idea what he will decide. And certainly after being Prime Minister for 10 years, he's entitled to some time to thoughtfully reflect on that. But I'd be surprised if he hasn't thought about it before tonight. And I'm certainly sure he's talking about it with his, uh, his close advisors right now. All right. Insiders, uh, stay with us. We'll be back to you in a little bit. Uh, uh, Jamie Watt, David Hurley, Kathleen Munch. Let's go to Montreal. Uh, Hannah Thibodeau, who is watching the NDP tonight, has uh, one of the senior strategists uh, in the NDP.